Hi, welcome to another video. Today's discussion is what's called tire dressing buildup. Unwanted in my world. Do you ever wipe the sidewall of your... Oh my gosh, can you believe that? Well, just so you know, that actually didn't come from my sidewall. I did that for dramatization purposes to create effect. It's called detail theater. Point is though, is it's a common problem for two reasons. One, your choice in tire dressing. Secondly, people fail to properly clean their sidewall before a new application of a tire dressing. So let's dissect those two problems. First problem is your choice in a tire dressing. This is one of the reasons I like the CSI new tire lotion. Waterborne technology, and I like to use the analogy of latex paint, meaning this. Latex paint is water-based paint. While it's wet, you can rinse it off and clean it with water. But once it's dry, no longer is it water soluble. Well, the same holds true with this. The water molecule is the carrier, which is different than a product that simply has water in it. This is formulated so that water molecule is the carrier for the active or the inert ingredients. Those are the good ingredients that you want to remain on your tire. So when you apply the tire dressing to your tire, that water molecule evaporates and it leaves behind it all the good stuff of the tire dressing, which also means that it dries to the touch. What also means that there's no tire sling. You'll notice on the back rocker panel of my car, there's no tire sling, despite the fact that I've driven with this tire for about a week and a half now, and there's zero, as in zero, zero, tire sling. So those are some of the winning attributes. But as a little caveat, I will add this, that not all tires are created equally, which means that the rubber composition of your particular tire will be as big of a determinant as your choice in a tire dressing as to the level of shine it's able to create which means you can spend a fortune finding and purchasing the best tire dressing in the world, but you use it on your inferior produced tire sidewall and you're disappointed because it just will not produce the shine you want. Well, that's not because of the fault of the dressing necessarily that you've chosen. It could be equally as much of a fault as your inferior tire composition. So you need to know that that's a big part of the equation in producing the desired results that you're after. So what, I want, so what do I want in a tire dressing? Well, I want some shine. I want it to dry to the touch. I don't want it to produce tire sling. So those are the things I don't want it to do. I want it to be made with good ingredients so it will condition the sidewall of my tire. So those are the things that I do want and the things that I don't want. So let's the second point, which is People fail to properly clean their sidewall before they apply the new coat of dressing. It's called being hasty or lazy. I don't know for certain, only you can decide in your world. Maybe you take your car to the car wash, guaranteed they're not going to clean it off properly each time. So you're presented with the challenge that maybe you have a sidewall that you have determined is excessive with buildup of tire dressing, uh, dirt, uh, maybe they use some solvent or oil-based dressings and it's just a big, fat, gooey mess and you want to clean it off. So I've got two ways you can accomplish this. Rubbing alcohol, acetone. Now some of you will freak out at the thought of using acetone on your sidewall. Now personally, I do not freak out because I know it's not going to trash the sidewall of my tire. What I do is I start with a microfiber cloth that is heavily soiled already. Meaning this, I have all these stages of microfiber cloths. So as I use them from the finest of finest detailing work, they get kicked down further and further until eventually they end up in the curb to the point where I want to throw them out. But I know that this can still uh, serve a purpose. And in this case, it's some really, really dirty work. So before I truly throw it out, I'm going to employ it to remove the spent the, the grungy buildup on my sidewall. So here I use acetone and I'm going to wear protection 
So I'll use this hand because I do not want acetone bleeding into my pores. But I know it's not going to damage the sidewall of my tire. And I'm sure there's plenty of guys and girls out there that would want to debate that endlessly with me. And that's fine. But I know it's one of the quickest ways to really clean the sidewall and to get all the little, all the buildup of all the nooks and crannies and the details and nuances of a sidewall. Every tire will be created uniquely. Therefore, you may have more details to your sidewall than I do. I've got plenty going on here, but I also don't allow the buildup to accumulate over a period of time anyways. But let's just pretend that you're in freak out mode at the thought of using acetone on your tires. Therefore, you default to basic rubbing alcohol that you can find at your local market. This I just get at Costco. It's gonna, still going to wear protection, but it's still going to do a very effective job based on the type of dressing that you're accustomed to using, based on the amount of buildup, but it's still going to break down that accumulated buildup. Why are we doing this? So that we can start anew start fresh, remove that grungy buildup. It's unwanted, it's undesirable. It's just not the way to do it. So you need to remember to clean that properly each time. Now, if you just use a basic all-purpose cleaner each and every time, and you're not using a heavily oil-based, solvent-based dressing, and let's say you choose a water or a dressing that's true waterborne technology like this one, you don't have to overthink it as long as you go through the proper steps, steps each time, which are you clean it first before you apply a new coat of dressing. So now that I've got this nice clean sidewall on my tire, now I whip out my dedicated tire dressing applicator. I've updated to my new choice of my favorite tire dressing applicator but it is based on this sidewall in particular because it is such a low profile tire. I've got a different video for that. Now, I want to manage this. I want this to get on that only. I don't want this to get on my wheel or my paint. Therefore, I'm not gonna spray my sidewall. I'm going to spray the dressing right onto the applicator and I'm going to finesse it. I'm not gonna go in level 10 and just you know, like a fire hose, I don't need to do that. Now, I already shook it because I just got done shooting another video, so it's already shaken up. As a rule, I'm gonna shake up every product that I use. Now that I have it on my applicator, I have complete control of transferring this stuff to where I want it, which is right on the sidewall. Now, one of the cool things about this dressing and true waterborne technology, and I use the um, analogy of latex paint, so this is true waterborne technology. What that means to you and I at a chemistry level is this. Water, the water molecule is the carrier for the active ingredients. Once you apply it to the sidewall, the water molecule evaporates, thus leaving the good stuff behind. It's like latex paint. While it's wet, you can clean it up with water. Once latex paint dries, it's no longer water soluble it will last forever on your house walls. And you can apply additional coats on top of additional coats. The same holds true with this, which means no tire sling. It dries to the touch uh, because it's not made with heavy oil and solvent based ingredients. It's not gonna make a big gooey mess like those types of dressings will. So it, it to me, it's the winning uh, features and benefits in a tire dressing, but that's just my opinion. You can do what you want But if you are going to apply multiple applications of it, you want to layer it Allow it to dry in between coats. That may be two minutes. That may be 15 minutes based on the weather temperatures the humidity direct sunlight versus shade those types of factors but let it dry, then come back in and apply additional coat if you want to. Just remember that your tire composition of your tire, as in the rubber composition, will be as big of a determinant in the desired results or the results that you get or don't get. Meaning you might be chasing shine out of a quality tire dressing, but it's just not producing the shine you want. 
Well, what you have to factor into that is that you may have a tire that just has inferior rubber composition to it. So you can buy the most expensive tire dressing in the world and apply layer after layer after layer and it's just not going to shine up like you want because the way it's molded, the rubber composition to it, the materials, that kind of stuff. This is a performance tire. Uh, it's high grade. So one coat is sufficient. Okay, that's my little uh, tutorial for the day. By all means, leave me a comment below. Let me know how you address that heavy, excessive layers of tire dressing buildup. Have you experienced it? Do you even know what I'm talking about? Why the heck did you even click on this video to watch it? Really, anything goes. And it's not just for my benefit, it's for the benefit of those viewers coming in after the fact that get to see and read your comments below. By all means, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you like what you hear. With that said is, now you know what Darren does, and we will see you on the next video.